All right, so we're going to do the age-old uh, bouncing ball in this video. In the last one, we did a bouncing in place. So we created a timing chart here, and uh, we have our ball image here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on looping. That's what this compressed image looks like. And so now when I hit Shift and Enter, you can see we have this, uh, oops, let's kind of bring this down a little bit too, so that we're looking at just those few frames. There we go. So it's kind of looping a little bit. That top frame can use a little bit less of a hit, but you can kind of loop through and check your animation. All right, let's go ahead and hide these. And let's go to our next one. So I'm just going to hit Control R. And I'm going to add two more frames. So this one I'm going to call T chart. And hit Add. And then I'm going to add another one called B ball, or my bouncing ball. Because you can't name two frames with the same thing, and I already have a ball one. So I'm going to hit add. Um, so for my timing chart, I'm actually going to just draw in my arc really quick. So this is more for practice. So it kind of scoops in this way, and then it bounces, bounces again. Let's go a little bit higher on that one. It bounces up like, oops. It's a little bit better. There we go. Bounces down, does a little baby bounce, and then it just rolls off. So I'm going to hit F5 here. And... What you can do is, uh, I hit F6 by accident, but, okay, so there it is. So what we can do is I can say, okay, on this, um, I'm going to just sort of have it ease in. So a couple ticks here. So this is frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then maybe, so we're going to do like maybe, let's do, 16 frames from here to here just to see how that looks maybe less so what i'm going to do on frame one on this one is i'm going to draw my ball up here and then on frame 16 i'm going to draw it squashed here so that means on frame eight which is roughly the halfway point it should be here so what i'm going to do is extend this out a little bit so i can see it there and just go through and just draw this out so i'm going to hit the period key to go to the next frame. All right, something like that. And then I'm going to leave this as a single frame in the middle here. So it's like a quick fall. So what I'll do is extend this out a little bit more. And maybe one right on top. So it's a very slow fall to a quick pow, pop. But then it starts to return to its original size. There we go. Okay, so let's see, and then we can go back and remove frames. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift and Enter. You can see it's, that slowdown is way too slow at the end. So what I might do is, let's pull this back a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and have it hit maybe on, let's do 12. So I'm going to delete these. And I think my timing was a little bit off. So here we are. I'm going to erase this out. Let's get rid of this one. And let's get rid of this one. And on this frame, let's just go ahead and ha go ahead and have them hit. So it like extends out onto the hit squashes, and then begins to turn out. So let's take a look at that. So there you go. You can see that um, we have it going down, and then boop, pops up. And then here, we could have it quickly leap up to here. So it's kind of fun just to, as a practice to go through as well. And um, even as you're timing these out, you can go back and fix these. Let's hit F5 here.
All right, let's see how that looks. So not too bad. So this is a nice little exercise of, of doing it out. I ordinarily, what you want to do is you want to try your best to plan out every one of those ticks so that it hits. But oftentimes, like you've noticed, what I did when I went back and fixed is you have to go back and clean up or fix your timing. All right, so this is kind of a basic sort of bouncing ball technique. Now, depending on the weight of the ball and its movements, for example, you'll always hear about the, bo the bowling ball will sort of hit hard on the ground. It'll come down quicker and things like that. But for now, from a practice point of view, it's a good idea to just practice with different types of balls. So for example, a tennis ball and so forth.